Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. And don't forget to check out my online store, www.pharmacaddle.com. All right, guys, we are doing some pasture work today. Um, I have a plan. My plan is to quantify every pasture, know the acreage properly, um, test the grasses for the yield that they have, and then I want to develop a harvesting interval so the farmer can actually capture the grass at the best time to either feed his animals or conserve. Um, we have a big problem here in December. I can show you guys. We have a lot of the plants seeding. Um, this is a Mombasa, it's a Panicum Maximum. And you can see they're all seeding. Now we realize that in the December time we have low, a slower growth in majority of tropical grasses. I think is related to the season so i think the shift in sunlight um affect it so a lot of the grasses are seeding at this point in jamaica you can go across it and see it plateau two grass here you can see that it start to seed so definitely this period is a period that where i really want to capture that data so we can actually look at how look at the growth look at the nutrient level and look at the dormancy and how we're going to impact your production system during this season. Um, Africa, which you see here, also you see doing a little flooring. If you look carefully, you can see some flooring going on here on the African star grass. So that's what I want to kind of show you guys today. Um, the mulatto grass to me is doing well. It's pretty. It's pretty. That's a good grazing grass for animals. And I think this is also the perfect grass um, for hay production. Um, if you look at it, you get a lot of leaf. There's a lot of leaf area on this. So you can just imagine you cut this down and turn this into bales. Excellent. And the leaf is actually pretty soft. It has some little prickles at the end, which I think goats might not like. Because I once planted mulatto at Hounslow and the goats didn't really like it. Um, I think that's the reason why the goats have a problem with the mulatto. So the mulatto to me is more ideal for dairy farmers, cattle farmers. You know, they would see better benefits from planting mulatto. So I'm going to do some sample collections today. I'm going to do some dry matter yield today. And then I'll keep you guys posted on this research. Because I think the data are going to be important to a lot of farmers who have partial lands like this. I do want to understand, you know, what's the estimated yield from a four acre block of Mombasa or a four acre block of Mulatto. Um, when best to harvest it based on your location and soil type is something that will come out from this research. But guys, it's going to be a very long journey. It's not going to come overnight. But I'll always keep you updated and posted on, on how far I'm at with this work and definitely share the data with you. So walk along with me as we, we put this together. They ask me, Kyle, how is that you measure the land? Um, we live in the 21st century. Um, I really use Google Earth. If you download Google Earth on your app, there is actually a program that you can actually measure the land from the satellite and it estimates the amount of acreage that you have. Or if you want, you can use your phone, you use a GPS system and collect the points. And then you can actually, you know, put that onto a next app that will kind of give you an estimated. Um, you know the estimated area that you covered using the, the GPS system but if not you can use the old days and you get a tape measure a very long one or a long card and you can measure the land manually but I prefer the Google the Google Earth method it's pretty accurate the marginal error is pretty low some persons asking about the, the tools that I use to do this type of parameters definitely you want a quadrant we're looking at dry matter yield or yield you have to use a quadrant you know we cut out in between the quadrant and we calculate it to estimate you know the acreage using that type of system um so a scissors is needed to cut the grass i need my sample bags to put my grass in after that now i'll carry it to the lab and we have it dried to get the dry matter from it and then you know we'll grind it up into smaller particles and we'll send that overseas for testing um when i was at borders i used to use the borders lab um, I think they're still trying to fix it up so we can actually have some local parameters done here like your crude protein and your NDF and your ADF. Um, but if you want other parameters like 
starch um and you know more technical components like a mineral composition etc um you can send it overseas um this going to help me create a baseline of our forages and i can now feed that into our system at the feed mill and we can tweak our formulations um with our concentrate feed to ensure that whatever mineral or nutrient that we think is missing we'll add that in the concentrate feed so it benefits the farm on the ground um that's the life of a nutritionist basically if you guys see over there they're actually harvesting the grass now they're using a, a field harvester and they're cutting the mulatto plot so when that come in to allow us to take some samples from that um to do some testing on it my promise that i don't have the age of this of this plot so i really have to kind of create my system from scratch cut it back and then we're going to come back at different weeks um, so I have something more accurate that is time related um, to me this plot might be over 12 weeks and from previous at 12 weeks grass is really paper so there's not much nutrients you can actually get from that grass to feed to the animals so there is it going shooting out alright guys we don't in St. Bess and that animal right there is eating the waste part of the carrot. So again, St. Isbet farmers always utilize what they grow and feed their animals. And if you look at the animal, they're in good body condition. Excellent. Excellent. But what I want to show you guys is Mr. Facey operation. Um, I always say this farm is very innovative and at the same time they integrate the production system. So you know St. Isaac farmers always plant um, some crop in them yard. If at the front of them yard, the back of them yard, then planting something. And he tries to focus on crops that he can use back in his production system. Um, to me, the glory crop that anybody could plant in Jamaica to feed any, any ruminant um, is corn. I think corn is probably one of the best crops we have out here. I think the management is the problem. You know, it attracts a lot of pests. There's a lot of pesticide use with it. Um, especially these new varieties, the native varieties seem to stand up strong. But Mr. Facey practices silage making. So he plants his corn, um, he harvests, and then he use dedicates some to silage production and to feed his goats. He's in, in blend it up. And that's, that's his terminology. So I just want to talk to him to see how the integration work. Um, to see how best you know we could pass on this knowledge to other farmers who might have land or interested in doing something very similar um i think genus showed us that that you know doing crop production alongside him's goat is beneficial to him and get both um a short term and a and a medium term investment so he has the cash flow flow on his farm so mr face is showing us that he has improved his operation him of him bringing some more animals this is this, this same son. Right. And then this is the big boy. Oh, I like this big boy. Open this gate then. Which, this is his yeah. gate? Yeah, go on, go on home, boy. Um, if you look at this boar, it's really nice. I love the, the horn set on this animal. Him have the face, body is big. Big bones, legs long. So, it's a face he plan for upgrading genetics. I already have quality genetics. If you can see all these animals, really nice graded stock. Um, new beyond with boar. And I love how them body big. Okay, so this this son. This boy's son and the MM daughter them. Oh, okay, they look nice. And then really I show the, the boar type genetics now. Um, but my question to you today is about your, your, your corn operation. Yes. I always admire how you guys plant and try to integrate what you plant as a crop um, into your, your goat rearing operation. So tell me how this works for you. Like really, what, what, how you plant this, um, what management practice to use when you harvest this corn like how much months or so 
and then how you make it into silage when you finish with it. Alright, so first of all, it's much easier, you know, close to the farm. So you will take like nine weeks for preparation and prepare and have this can. So we have in two stages, one that we can use back as to as human. Mm -hmm. And then we use it, the stock as to the, the trash and blend with, with grass and put it in the barrel. Also we have we have cans where we definitely put back in just in case of better management in terms of the bag feed we have the own can. We are we don't make it dry but we make it just milky. So we blend all together and barrel. And so we have really seasoned beneficial to me because it's hard, difficult to get grass and say wet grass so when while it's raining we have barrels inside and feed if we have also heavy drought as you know south east central we suffer from heavy drought we still have enough you know, barrel we can supply us for months so how much barrels you normally try to stock up on well we always have like 13 14 and the goal is to reach at 50 barrels and so and you know, one barrel can, can a barrel can last, you know, for the amount of goat for almost a week. Okay, one barrel. okay, that's what I was going to ask right. you. So on a barrel of three hundred pounds, a, 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 a can crush will hold in a barrel. So three hundred pounds in that right. one barrel. Okay, yeah. good, 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 good. I like that so you have the the mats behind of it. Yes, man. So much easier, easy access, close to the farm. Right. So we have that. So nothing we nothing go away. Nothing got to waste with that face. 360 cycle, still manure. This manure go right back to the corn field and we produce corn again. And we can eliminate buying fertilizer or just one fertilizer. Nice, nice, nice. Country. So, country. So, yeah. the calculation we did was 200 can, mm. 200 country by three. You can get a barrel, one barrel. So, 200 country can give you one barrel. one barrel. I like that, Mr. Facey. That we like the farmers, we have the yeah, mats man. down that's to a, the tea. That's a, a calculation with bent. With I bent. Will, I will share it. I will share it. Yeah. So guys, you hear that? Every 200 can you see the plant and get, you can make a barrel of silage. Perfect, Mr. Facey, perfect. So we the, the growth of the soil. Of the soil, mm -hmm. Because you want to put two crop in one field so you can get the beneficial from it. At the same time, the, the, um, the goat loves the, the soil leaves. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's a good combination for blending. Beautiful. So you have red and green together. You can see it. Can't I like that. MFK all day, baby.